This lecture was originally planned for University of Buffalo in conjunction with work in real time. Every morning I wake up and do the same thing. Every morning I think the wall's gonna look different, but it doesn't. So I just pull on the socks that I've been wearing for the last three days. I do my breathing exercises, eat my oatmeal, and I sit down to work. As if things weren't personal enough, let's hang out here in my bathroom one of the more acoustically underutilized places of the home, and the perfect place to broadcast your professional life online. Plus, it's very sanitary. Now, let's talk about the work. That frenetic pace that you just experienced is something that I like to use in a lot of my video work, which is often about our technologized world and how we as people with bodies fit into it. But this video that you're seeing a little snippet from right now is something quite different. I made it a couple weeks ago. It's called Finding Belief in Life Again. And it was just a piece that I inspi felt inspired to make that's um, kind of like a spiritual audio essay about how you can cultivate and recultivate a sense of belief or faith non-religiously or anything just based in nature and understanding that things grow in nature. I think that's one of the most important things that we could remember right now. This is a really sped up clip from the film that I wrote and directed and shot in February with some amazing actors. And the plot of the movie is a, about a woman who's essentially been kind of cloned or she has these like multiple accounts that have been created and she's sort of figuring it out and realizing that she can't just watch her life pass her by as if it's a TV show. Her other selves have actually got to go save herself. So I spent a lot of time editing video and in order to make all these quick cuts and lots of effects, you have to put layer upon layer of text and graphics and animation. So this is a video kind of episode to a TV show called The Inside Room that I made in 2019, in, uh, spring of 2019 at Recess Art, and got to work with some of the young artists there at Assembly, as well as some awesome friends. And it's about two young men who are in a self-driving car whose GPS goes haywire and it starts directing them to drive along the lines of uh, some randomly generated content and uh, the keyword is potholes and there's a parallel storyline with these two corporate office workers who get sued for by, by their co-workers for using uh, thousands of dollars in um, corporate <laughs> massage money. <laughs> Super fun to make, uh, a lot of improvisational work, and really fun to tie together the storyline. This is um, some clips from Focaccia Town, which is a one-woman operetta that I wrote in 2017 and then wrote a sequel to in 2019 and performed it at the kitchen for the closing of my solo show, Animal Static. And the storyline is equally as convoluted, so-called absurd, I would just call it realistic. It takes place in a medieval future at a fast casual bakery chain slash military base and it's about this nuclear family. The daughter's name is Brioshi and she discovers that this man who's shot for bringing a bag of chips to her parents house for a fundraising gala is actually related to her and the kitchen will be posting the full documentation on May 15th along with a text I wrote about it, and you could also hop onto my YouTube and watch it. All of these videos are on my YouTube, that is youtube.com slash Lex Brown. These are some clips from Animal Static, the show that I had at the kitchen in 2019, and they all happen in what I call the Mediaverse, which is where all my work and video takes place. And the narrative of these videos centers around a beverage company called Ice and Cream that sells ice and cream but not ice cream or water and it's about this economy of video content um, 
the characters in this world all use videos as their currency as opposed to say credit cards and so media and the commodification of media is something I'm always thinking about um, it's something that carries information but it's also something that carries value in its metadata so these videos were installed in an installation with like motion sensors that made the video respond differently to you depending on how close or far you were to it and the motion sensors also triggered the lighting on the drawings so you'd have a more sort of performative experience of the drawings the drawings were large-scale text drawings i make a lot of text drawings this is a drawing that i made a couple weeks ago while in quarantine with some of the lyrics to one of the songs from Focaccia Town. It says, as long as we are two, we can be free. This is a painting, but most of the time I draw, just felt like painting. This is another series of drawings that were at my show at Kate Warble Gallery very recently. And it was called, They Flew to Planet Nova. And the drawings kind of, st the drawings stem from looking back on my upbringing in a techno burb of Virginia. So these drawings are meditating on that landscape and making some of the invisible technology like the internet more visible, um, server farms and the power lines, just visualizing that infrastructure as well as the psychological effect of that infrastructure and making a link between the effects of colonialism with the effects of technological process. The other project that I'm working on while at home is a performance that will be next week um, and a Q&A with B. Oakley, who's the publisher of my book Consciousness. Last year, B and I created a book that's an anthology of eight years of my work in video and performance, and it contains the lyrics to 33 different songs and poems that I had never published before. So what you're hearing right now is some of my music from performances over the years. And I'm gonna shut up now so you can listen to a little bit of it. listening to now was all uh, composed and produced by myself on Logic. Before performances, I love to collaborate with musicians. It's definitely the most fun part of my work, even though my work is a lot of fun, which you would never get from my speaking voice. Speaking of which, we're going to be doing an IG live concert and Q&A next week, so watch out for that. So there's a little look into my life and my practice right now. I hope you guys enjoyed it. It was fun for me, also a little weird and crazy, the number of screen levels that we were going through, but I enjoy it as always. And I'm really looking forward to being a guest judge and the host of work in real time and seeing how that video format plays out so i hope you guys are not healthy i hope you're running around with scissors and i hope that you are doing everything terrible that you can just kidding you guys know how i feel i'll see you on the internet